This cool. is outright a feast in terms of artwork. You get everything in this. But where our hearts truly lie is in peace and quiet. They didn't use um, CG to shrink. I mean, the fact that they're using scale doubles and a lot of it, even though they're force doing multiple passes, force perspective. Yeah. The force perspective stuff. stuff was mind blowing when I first saw how they did that. I was like, wow. They had to amazing. find the, the biggest chickens they could possibly find yeah. to put next to the people. <laughs> I, I love how every time you get a close up of the ring, you just know that that ring's the size of a fucking basketball. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. Half the shy has been invited. And the rest of them are turning up anyway. <laughs> you know, another thing about this movie that people forget is they were pioneering color grading software. It was really the way they were able to create power windows and, and, and eye lights and accentuate that stuff. <laughs> and so life in the Shire goes on, very much as it has this past age. It's very handcrafted, but the the color grading in this film is is absolutely beautifully done. There's as much going on there as there was with Andrew Lesney's cinematography. Like everything else, it gives this film a bespoke, handcrafted, Savile Row feel. For things are made to endure in the Shire, passing from one generation to the next. They try and duplicate it in other movies, but they can't. Part of it, I think, is it, so important is it was made at the exactly the right time. Like, yeah. I don't think this works yeah. 20 years earlier or later. Well, look at The Hobbit opening compared Ugh. to this opening. Yeah. Uh, yeah, night and day. He's up to something. All right, then, keep your secrets. Good. But I know you have something to do with it. Good gracious. This is all, it, it's like you're watching sometimes a watercolor painting. Yes. Um, you know, like, like really like painting come to life. Yeah, and it really was. I mean, they they had two fantasy artists. They had the two best Tolkien artists in the world working on this the whole time. You know, painting imagery, John Howe and and um Alan Lee. Oh, Alan Lee. Never had any adventures or did anything unexpected. If you're referring to the incident with the dragon, I was barely involved. And they um Hey, the fact that the fact that everybody was on the same page, that they had all of these people in, in creative key positions that were all really serving this singular vision. And while Peter definitely was and Philip and Fran were filtering it all without what was going on with Weta and Weta Workshop and Weta Digital, I mean, they always nothing was ever good enough. They were always making it better. <laughs> Remember and those you, days? You feel it. We've been officially labeled a disturber of the peace. Mm -hmm. You feel it in better. every frame. Yeah. It also helps that there was like over a year just to prep for the movie before they yes. started shooting anything. Oh, God, yeah. Whereas yeah. with The Hobbit, they were given no time at all and didn't even have a script for the third movie by the time they started shooting. You can tell there's an ass load of effort that was done just to setting all this shit up before they started. Sun's first light crept over the top of the trees and turned them all to stone. It, it was it was like a, it was when an actor makes a choice how to play a part they were also making choices from a production standpoint what they would do to accentuate these characters to differentiate them from one another I don't know why I took you in after your mother and father died but it wasn't out of charity you were the one baggins that showed real spirit Rubs. All the races when they when they talk about Rohan, I mean the design of the armor, the design of the the colors they used in the fabrics were different than the fabrics they would use for the elves, or different than what they used in Gondor. And you see all of that in the film. I mean, you're not necessarily aware of it, but you feel it. If it was made 20 years earlier or 20 years later, it was like made at the perfect time when visual effects were becoming more of a part of movie making and were able to like accentuate and work in places where they couldn't use practical, but they, I mean, look at these sets, you know. I suppose you think that was terribly clever. Come on, Gandalf. Did you see their faces? Why should I keep it? I think you should leave the ring behind. Oh, the business is of yours when I do with my own ring. Come on, Baggins! Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. Imagine if fucking Disney made this, like everything around them would be just green screen. And I think that's a problem because like even a scene where, where Gandalf first goes and talks to Saruman at, at, uh, at Isengard, they'll show you an establishing shot that has an effect 
that's combined with live action, and yeah. it'll pan down, and you'll see the two of them talking outside. But they're they're fairly medium shots, medium to close up shots. So there's they don't have to put visual effects in them, and it's them talking in real Ooh. environments. Then you cut to an effect shot. It feels much more seamless. But when you're in environments that are completely generated and there's no reality in them, you don't get that same feel. And this movie does both all the time, and so you buy into it. I'm trying to help you. So you'd have them say something like, you know, with the set dress, and it's like, oh, we can ask the CG guys to put in some extra bits and bobs in the background. It's like, no, 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 you've already lost. You were supposed to want to do it. You were supposed to want to create all this stuff. Like, that's the spirit of, like, the whole thing. When they're coming up with, like, what's in Bilbo's room, you know that passionate people are like, well, what would he have in his room? What do we know he has in his room? And what do you need to see to represent this, that, the other? As opposed to, like, oh, problem? Get it to the CG guys. They could probably solve it. Oh, funny is that I think I forgot most oh, of Rings of Power, but I am. Oh, I love this. I, I, can't, I can't get out this of my head. This is where the bad guys live. Yep, yeah, this is definitely where the bad guys <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah, I it would just be fantastic it. if this is where the goodies are based. It's like, <laughs> oh man, we need to get. We, we got a bad rap. <laughs> Hey, they just right, like this really little... angular architecture, okay? Yeah. Yes. It's such a beautiful model, though. I love it. Look at this. Red. Oh, the green. <laughs> I don't think a lot of that's to code, though. And this, it's like, calm down, film. I can only coom so many times in a row. I know, dude. Uh -oh, then yeah, then the nine come out, it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's funny because oh. people watching that in the cinema who didn't know the books would have thought they were coming out of Baradur, but it's like a completely different city that they're they're coming out of. Three movies for one, too. Look at him. Look at that. A real location. Beautiful. I love this set. Yeah. So good. It's such a great spooky wizard uh, fortress. Oh, I fucking love it. It really is. And look at the god rays, you know? The luminous it lighting. <laughs> that shot with the Nazgul. Oh. Over, uh, <laughs> the Hobbit's so good. I love that shot that shows that, like, there's fucking nails inside that horse's hoof. It doesn't draw a lot of attention to the little things yeah. in the costume design, but you yeah, can you notice them. <laughs> Now it's conspicuous. You've ruined it forever. No, he's accentuated it, and it's wonderful and beautiful and amazing. And when Ooh. I was a kid... I actually thought that those bugs were coming out of the Nazgul. That would be disturbing. Be... What was that? I remember like the watching the director's man. commentary for this, and like their thinking was like, this, this presence of this thing just drives out. Yeah. life in all its forms like they want to get out of the ground because like it, the energy of this thing's just infected it it's so interesting to think about all of the techniques that you know the purpose is to be invisible but at the same time you know it's, its presence is apparent right like the magnets underneath the floor when the ring hits the ground to make it feel like a heavy burden's been dropped Because it's the size of a dinner plate, right? The, the the one like in the snow. I wonder if they made a giant hand for that giant ring. Well, what was well, cool about oh, like the gorgeous. production of this is like almost the entire trilogy was fully storyboarded before they started filming, so they planned out a ton of these shots well before they actually got out what? of the camera. Why do that? Why can't you just spontaneously now, grab shots? Like, oh yeah, no, we haven't finished the script and I have no idea where this story is leading. I don't know what everybody else is doing. I imagine storyboarding it out really helped with the CGI in this movie too, because I've heard from like, especially people who work on the CGI for Marvel movies right now, they don't bring the CGI artists on the set to actually look at shit. Mm. Yeah, and when you don't do that and you, and you make like shots and then you just assume that the CGI artist can work around that, you, you got like this mess on screen that could just be fixed if you storyboarded it out and had people who knew what they were doing around. Oh, no! 
a lot of these early films, because visual effects were still new, it was like a part of the process that had to be integrated. Like it was necessary that it was integrated into a lot of the other. Yeah, like know, a lot of the filmmaking. a lot of the attitudes and formats for creation were stuff they did out of necessity, and have since become yes. something that they should strive to do because it had such great results. Whereas now, it's just like, well, yeah, I mean, we can use the computers to achieve a lot of things. Like, it's just a ubiquitous thing that's available and present. But without that, like, foresight and planning and, like, all of those attempts while actually filming to make sure that everything is laid out to make the task easier to get better results, then you get stuff like fucking Marvel movies where everything looks awful when there's really no reason that it should look that bad. <laughs> I, I love the slowed down, like, neigh that horse makes when they realize that the ring's being used. Mm. Yeah. It's just really creepy sounding. That shot with Butterbur, though, with the, yeah. with the Nazgul and their knives. God, that's so good. Love it the way they flow. Like... Sauron, Lord of the Earth. Quanta Palantir. The medieval telephones. Yeah. Look at that eye. Oh, it looks so good, though. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. It's, but again, it's a stunning the, it would be like, oh, it's the CG uh, you incorporate correctly there. It's like, yeah, you wouldn't be able to probably do a practical orb that has the eye and he does all the swirling. Build me an army. Put it out, you fools! Some of this stuff is actually hard to compliment because you take it for granted sometimes, but like the way the the orcs look are incredible. All the orcs in a row. Yeah, they're all like, oh, yeah, the makeup yeah. and the, the effect. It looks incredible. amazing. You get smacked with it all at once. You just sort of just like, yeah, this is all amazing. More, please. <laughs> Here's the worst shot in the whole trilogy. <laughs> what, what the fuck were they thinking with this one? <laughs> it's ethereal. It's not ethereal, it's retarded. I love this movie, but that's a horrifically bad shot. Even the Frodo one looks awkward. Like, it looks like you could do it in your own editing thing yeah, pretty quick. The Elrond one is hilarious. <laughs> the, the, the Elrond one looks like the <laughs> beginnings of a horrible fever dream. Look at these mountains. Oh, here. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's it is fascinating industry. to think about how much of, like, New Zealand as a country, like, globally, is defined by this film series. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, I mean, it really it, is, like, a huge aspect of how they're, under, like, known around the world. I mean, was this the first movie to really make use of New Zealand as a filming location? Um, like, first high profile? Probably one. not the first, but certainly be, high profile, yeah. It, it was, yeah. yeah, super high profile. I am companion. So be it. <laughs> oh, this is so good. So to uh, mission quest. You shall be the fellowship of the ring. I view it as a like I know it sounds silly, but as a trilogy in that like this to me is like, oh yes, we've got the thrust now. Right. Where are we going? And this is where which, the first disc ends. Which is interesting considering that, you know, it's like, how far are we? Oh, like nearly two hours. But it oh, doesn't the, feel like it, does it? I mean, yeah. people like complain about the pacing of them sometimes, but I just, I think they're fucking perfect. No. I, I can't believe ones. that people throw such a fit over how long the ending of Return of the King is. And it's like, it's really not long at all. The, the big it's key perfect. to it is look at the ending's length compared to the story, which is enormous. I think it's like 20 minutes on the dot. Pretty much. Which is from fine. Yeah. This, this, yeah. Trilogy. this trilogy is now the, the length of your average series on Disney Plus or mm -hmm. Amazon, and it does so much more with its time. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, the ending is perfect. In her heart, your mother knew you'd be hunted all your life. That you'd never escape your fate. Well, I mean, you know, like the 20 minutes of, of this film is equivalent to the total content of Ahsoka. Yes. <laughs> And next season, too, if there is one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The skill of the elves can reforge the Sword of Kings, but only you have the power to wield it. There are certain frames in this that have more content than all of us. So I mean, <laughs> arguably, yeah. Well, the shot of them all together as a fellowship, I feel like that's already yeah. more. Oh, it, it's look so, at that. Like, look at that. I, I just love so the way nice. the ring looks, you know? It's awesome. so Plain, so mundane. It's so plain, exactly. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. Ah, oh, there's so much to just praise it's all the time. <laughs> So 
detailed. Yeah, so I'm wondering like what this is. Is this like a like a practical well, miniature yeah. that they move and yeah. have a camera go towards and they can like open it up and separate it? You know what they awoke in the darkness of Khazadu. Oh, look Can't at him. I fucking wait to see the Balrog again. Dude, the Balrog is so awesome. Shadow. I love how they they tease it by uh, showing like a sketch of it. It looks yeah. fucking great as well. <laughs> I know it's so fucking cool, and then it, yeah. <laughs> you see it, and it's like even cooler, like by a massive margin. We cannot stay here. This will be the death of the hobbit. Yeah, they really did it justice because Tolkien describes it so beautifully as well that it's made of fire and shadow, and it's just a uh, great monster. We will go through the mines. So be it. Yeah, and it's remembered forever, and it's an example of the, the era using CG where it's needed, where it was a tool. How's your shoulder? Better than it was. You wonder if it is, like, because, I mean, of course, there was an immense amount of visual effects here, but even, you know, it's not like every single shot had it compared to some stuff now where, like, 100% of the shots have visual effects work. You must be careful now. You feel its power growing, don't you? I feel it too. If it's like a, a matter of all of the effort is strained, it's spread so thin that like it hampers everything. Maybe that's the reason why Iron Man looks pretty crap towards the end. Home of my cousin Valil, and they call it a mine. A mine! These Moria vibes are fucking so good. It's so creepy and dark. Dude, the way yeah. he describes it before they hit the realization. This is no mine. It's a tomb. <laughs> Oh, oh, this he, is wrong. Gimli's not paying attention. He's yeah. just like, oh, we're gonna party here. W wait a minute. Oh! Oh! He sells it too. He's not like a fucking idiot character who's just like, whoa, this is weird. Well, that just happened. We make for the gap of Rohan. <laughs> And then, on top of everything else, a big water monster's trying to kill him. Crazy. What a terrible day. Yeah.